Hello, welcome to my studio. This year I want to go on a journey of finding the perfect brush for me. I have two brushes that I use a lot. Well, I have one that is like a workhorse and one is like my dream brush, but I've realized that my dream brush is really hard to get hold of in the UK and really expensive. So I want to find other brushes that are more affordable, more available, that I can get to. So I thought it would be fun if we go on this journey of testing out a ton of brushes with you so that I can share what I think of the brush and you can find out what you think of the brush and how they work and stuff without having to pay for it. So basically I've bought all the brushes so that you don't have to buy all the brushes and you can just pick the ones you want and buy lots. I mean a lot of brushes. What I've done is I've bought size 10 round because that's the one that I use the most. Um, it might not be the one that you use the most but this is a half this series is going to be half for myself in finding the brushes i want so i've gone with size 10 i hope you guys don't mind they are all round and as you can see they are very different sizes even though they're all size 10 brushes some of them are british because i live in the uk a lot of them are available in Jackson's, which is great because that means everyone can get hold of them because they will ship worldwide. And then there are some Japanese ones that I've bought from Sakaida because for me, that's a reasonably easy place to get brushes. So I would say it's going to be half Western brushes and half Japanese brushes, but they're all going to be watercolor brushes and not a Nihonga brush or a calligraphy brush or anything like that so it's going to be exciting it's certainly going to be exciting for me and in this episode we're going to take a start with my what i call my dream brush which is this it's the princeton heritage 40 50 round and i bought this a long time ago when i first started doing watercolor i was really really frustrated on a course it was a painting course it was a floral painting course by a lady called Yao Cheng over on creative bug by the way if you're a beginner at watercolor and you just don't know where to start that's a great website to go to because they have really easy to follow beginner watercolor courses and I just wasn't getting the shape that she was getting and she was using this and I didn't have this and when I got this brush, I understood how she can get that shape and I can't. Unfortunately, this brush is very hard to get hold of. So if you do, if you're ever feeling generous and kind and you want to get me a brush that I love, then please send me this in size 10 or 8 or maybe 12, and 12. I don't know. But... Obviously, I don't want to be one of those people that expects people to send me stuff. So I'm going to go on this journey of finding um, brushes that I like besides this brush. So I thought this would be a good first episode to find out what this brush can do so we can compare with other brushes. It might be that we find one that behaves like this or it might be that I find a brush that I like even better. I'm totally open to that. So let's start taking a look at this brush. This is the test sheet. I'm sure you've seen this before in when we tested the crema test sheet. I've changed it a little bit, but it's pretty much the same thing. We've got the water, all the information for the brush up here, water capacity, that's how much it can cover with one load of brush, release where you go up and down to see how the water releases. Max Wix is when you just plonk it down and see how wide a line you can get belly drag is when you hold the brush on its side and just drag across like this thin line is basically trying to get as thin a line as possible leaf is when you go from very tip like here and then just go down across and then come back up again snake is just going like this Obviously, flat wash is flat wash. <laughs> and then gradation, lift, dry. That's basically let the dry, let the paint dry. 
and then trying to see how much lift I can get off this brush and then dashes is just just dashing away and seeing what shape it creates. So this is the Princeton Heritage 4050R in the round size 10. It's a lovely, lovely brush. I love it. And it has such a fine point. As you can see, so fine. Hold on. So fine point. And let me wet it for you. It gets to such, such fine point. And this is what I like about this brush. It goes to a really fine point and then it offloads, it releases the water really evenly. But I'll show you the test sheet so that you can have a look at how this behaves. It is made with synthetic sable. So that's a fiber called Golden Taclon. And I have a note here. Taclon's tack is taken from the person who developed it called Naohide Takamoto, which I didn't know that that's what Taclon was. So I thought that was quite cool information that was on their website. It is very hard to find in the UK. Their brand website recommends retail price is $22. So it's really expensive as it is without trying to import it into the UK. I think this is going to be one of the most more expensive brushes we'll cover in this series because I like to keep it around the £10. I guess that will be like $15 mark. I'm believing cheap brushes. <laughs> I'm a use expensive paints and use cheap brushes because I'm rough on my brushes, especially as I do abstract. I, I'm really hard on brushes, so I prefer a cheaper brush. The bristle length is 26 millimeters. Bristle length is here. The diameter of the brush or the bristle is 5.77. I don't know if that's going to be interesting to you guys. Um, I have it as information, but if it's not interesting to you guys, then do let me know. Overall brush size is 20.7 centimeters. It's a nice size. It's not too long. It's not too short. It is made for watercolor. And it ranges from a 5 over 0, which is tiny, tiny brush, to size 30. Let's look at the water capacity. I'm going to bring a brush that we're going to see later on, just as a comparison. Because I think when you just see one, you're like, okay, what does that mean? Now, this is the... Pro Art Connoisseurs, it's not quite a mop brush, but it's a very good water loading brush. And you can see that it has much more paint in one load of brush. Whereas this, it kind of runs out of water very fast. It, you only get five lines without any dryness to it. And then it just stays dry, but still has some paint in it. It was a really weird experience in that the tip will stay wetter than the body. So if I tried to just draw the line with the tip of the brush, it was a lot easier than I, I would get more paint coverage. But then as I go along, you know, you start dragging the belly of the brush and it would run out. It, would, it was unexpected. In terms of release, it's really good at release. I think we, this is the release and thin line is what makes it very good for drawing the kind of art that Yeo Chang does, uh, which is floral. Because you can make petals and leaves and you can get really fine tip. And the water load is pretty even. For comparison, I'll show you a bad case, which is the Proline, uh, Pro Art Proline Plus. And you can see the dark patches where it's uneven offloading of water compared to how smooth the Princeton one is. If you do a lot of up and down motion with your brush, this is a great brush because you get a nice even offloader of water regardless of what you're doing with it. Max Wits, you can tell that it's not a very thirsty brush. It doesn't hold that much water because the edges 
are very dry already. I'm not quite sure what the belly drag shows yet. I'm hoping that by testing out a lot of different brushes, I will learn what the belly drag will tell us. But I thought I'll put it in there anyway for now. This is where, these two is where this brush shines. It's how thin a line you can create from a size 10 brush. It's because of its amazing point. However, I did notice that it was easier to get straight thin lines if you keep the line shorter. Whereas you can see here, it's much more wobbly and uneven if the lines get bigger. So I think this will be great for doing little fur textures and stuff because then you're going to be using short strokes rather than longer strokes. But you get such a thin line for how big this brush is. Then you have the leaf and this is basically, you know, what this brush would be, was chosen for by Yeo. And you get such fine tip and even offload and then you know you can tail off very thinly again in terms of snaking this does have some spring to it it's, it's it doesn't at the moment because it's wet so as a dry brush can you hear that it does have a bit of a snap but because the tip is so thin that feels a lot softer than the body which feels a lot firmer but basically what i feel like is the tip is very soft and then the belly or the body of the brush is quite springy so you can see here and i will put high res scans of this up on my patreon and my patreon lounge so that you can have a good look but you can see the corners aren't very smooth and that shows you that there's some spring to it it's not completely soft and that springness comes from the body of the brush in terms of flat wash it was really really hard i had to reload the paintbrush so many times just to cover this little area so it's not very it doesn't hold that much water, which we kind of knew from the water capacity. I also had problems down here where the tips would just flick out because it's a little bit soft. It's definitely something you need to get used to um, if you're doing flat wash. But I think this is for florals, doing lines and details rather than big washes. Anyway, gradation, I think it did a great job. The only thing is I had to keep loading more and more water, way more than I have to do in some of the wetter brushes that we're going to cover in this series. In terms of lifting, it, you don't get a smooth edge to it. It, I would say it's a medium in terms of how good it is at lifting the paint once it's when it's dry. In terms of dashes, I think you get cute lines. The only thing you got to look out for is the tip is so much softer than the body. So you need to decide whether you're going to do dashes with just the tip or include the brush because that gives you two different texture. And when if you do that with just the tip, you get nice even i would say like a long grain rice shape now because this brush the tip is so fine you will need to take good care of it once you finish with it obviously clean it and then dry it with a kitchen towel and then just do this to keep the point because this point won't last long if you don't do it it's not a workhorse brush like my Pro Lean Pro Art brush so you will need to take good care of it and it's relatively expensive brush so yeah I, you really should take good care of this brush but otherwise if you do floral if you do animal I think this will be a great brush for you. I hope this video was useful to you do let me know what you think of this test sheet and if you find any of it not useful let me know and i might swap it out for something else if you can think of something that is better to test the brush on then also do let me know because then i'll swap it out for, with the not as useful one thank you so much for watching this video i hope you guys are excited for this new series i know i am because i get to test lots of brushes and that's great i will leave link down below where you can get hold of this not in the uk but definitely in the us 
so if you do want to try one of these then you can please do like and subscribe this video if you enjoyed it and i will see you guys in the next episode bye